Hello, and today on the 6th Axis, we've got a special look at Neo 2. I've been lucky enough to spend some time with it, and the good news is that it feels like an excellent refinement of what the first game already did so well. That means you can expect more hacking, slashing, dying, and cute spirits. To help you get in the mood for a game that is so hard that the sound capture didn't work, here are five cool things you should know about Neo 2. Rather than following the story of William, the Irish dude from the first game, you instead get to create your own character from scratch. However, your character has the ability to do lots of things that William couldn't. Whether or not the story ends up leading up to William somehow remains to be seen, but given that it's set several decades prior to the first story, it's anybody's guess. The good news is that the lore of the world means you might see some familiar faces or hear some familiar names, but it also means you're likely to face off against a whole new world of horrors. Aren't you lucky? Perhaps the most interesting difference between the old playable character and the new is the ability to go full yokai. As you defeat demons, you can absorb their cores into yourself. These unlock special attacks that you can assign to the different spirits as you find them. These attacks have you transforming into the very demons you're slaying, which means you can suddenly become a monkey with a stick, a strange one-legged creature with a hammer for a foot, or even just someone with a cannon for an arm. It also means you can do the yokai counter, which gives you some invincibility frames against certain attacks and allows you to counterattack them without taking damage. While I didn't get to see much variety in my short time with the game, what was there felt great, and I can't wait to see more of these special yokai attacks. As there are a few other new features in the game, you'll have a special yokai spirit who appears to give you advice sometimes. The most notable example from the demo that I played was when I entered these special yokai cloaked areas called the Dark Realm. Here, the enemies recovered their key much faster, which made fights much tougher, and dissipating the realm could only be done if you rang a bell. Were it not for my little friend, I'd have never realised that. Did you know that Neo is in fact set in the same universe as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Because it's not. Nevertheless, thanks to the wonderful enemy designs and the incredibly deep well of lore that you can pull from, you can in fact fight Master Splinter. But this is in his later years when he's all broken down from looking after four teenagers for so many years and just wants to nap. Admit it, you'd be grumpy too. Finally, and probably my favourite thing about the new game, is the Switch Glaive. This is a new type of weapon that doesn't look like much when it's on your back, but it actually transforms depending on which of the three stances you're in. The low stance has you flipping it all around your body like a deranged hula hoop. This is great if you prefer a speedy approach, but it definitely has limited range and relies far more on dodging than the other two forms. The mid stance has the weapon taking the form of a glaive, which means a really long stick with a pointy bit at the end. This has better stagger and better range than the, than the lower stance, and it hits a lot harder too. It's fun, but I've never been that into the middling weapons. Finally, and probably my favourite of the three, the high stance has the switch glaive taking the form of a scythe. The combos are slow, the hits are devastating, and you look like the Grim Reaper when you're holding it. It also felt like the best choice against bosses when you only had tiny windows to attack in, meaning you really had to deal the most damage possible at once. So there you have it, five things you should know about Neo 2. Other than that, all you really need to know is that it's due to come to PS4 on March 13th, and it will probably come to PC at some point too, but there's no word on that just yet. Fingers crossed it happens before the end of the year. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to the 6th Axis for all of your gaming news.